Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. I'm probably looking a little bit dishevelled and crumpled. That's because it's, uh, we're in the middle of a heat wave here and our air conditioning is struggling to catch up. This is the current uh, on the ground temperature with the aircon on, uh, so there's no way I'm switching that off, but there will be a little bit of background noise. I do apologise for that. Today, though, we're looking at the new Roland Gomix uh, Pro X. This is the latest in the Pro X range, or the Gomix range, started out a while ago. These little utilitarian mixers that allow you to kind of create multiple line inputs into class compliant USB in a very portable format. Gomix Pro X uh, actually is quite a lot of stuff going on here. We've got 11 inputs on this. Uh, it runs off USB power or on battery power. There are uh, there's room for if we take this off, I'm, we've got room for four AA batteries. Four, sorry, four AAA batteries in here, which it doesn't actually come with. I'll get this off in a second. But you will need to use this if you want to uh, run Phantom Power because this will provide Phantom Power to the mic preamp that it's got in here because it's got a combi jack right here i mean this is built to a price i'm guessing uh knobs feel a little bit sort of wibbly wobbly uh not terror and it's very light plastic also we've only got a mini or is that a micro usb jack here which i would really like to have seen them put a usb c or even a uh a, a usb a just because you've got a better connection this these connections i really am not fond of but we've got up to 11 inputs here we've got Combi jack here for a mic. We've got instrument level in here. This is for a guitar or a bass. A smartphone in out here. Phantom power 48 volt, which does need the AAA batteries installed. It won't work off that. Then we've got on this side uh, a pair of uh, quarter inch jack inputs, which is uh, using this in this case for the. Uh, I've got the Roland MC707 here. Can't, I don't think I've got a shot with that in. You can just see the bottom of it here. That's coming in here. So if I press play. That's what we're hearing. Uh, my path actually is I'm running through from here into uh, a mixer here and then into the system. So we'll try some other things. But the thing about the GoMix, which makes it really interesting, is it's designed to be very, very portable. And so, you know, for instance, uh, I put my phone in here, connect it up via USB or via the, the uh, stereo jack out on this side, and I've got basically class compliant connection if it's USB and it means that I've got the ability to mix all of these inputs into my sound card, my camera app, whatever it may be. I'll show you that a bit later but we'll get on to some more of the specifications. So like I say, two inputs here, uh, a guitar input here, XLR input here, then on this side we have a headphone headset, which is one of those triple band. I haven't got a connection for this. I'm just using this as this, the stereo out for us to monitor at the moment. Uh, there's loopback audio, which we'll get into that in a sec, but also a pair of extra stereo line inputs. So we've got two stereo line inputs on mini jack here. A stereo line input here, that makes six, seven, eight, nine, plus the USB return. So 11 inputs total into this little thing. It's not all great. Um, like I say, it's a little bit flimsy. And I would really like to have seen some kind of camera mount, quarter inch, whatever, you know, just so that we could screw this on somewhere and to fix it to something else. So the first thing I was looking at is what's it like in terms of level. So I've got the MC707 here, which I'm just playing. And I'm only using, this is my pot here. It's got tons of gains. So if I turn the level down, I can actually drive it and it's not an unpleasant an unpleasant sound. This gives me the master output for the headphones. Then I've also got, uh, I haven't got a return on this guy, but I've also got a bass guitar here which I can plug in. Well actually not only that, I've got the NTS-1 which is coming in out of this input into one of the stereo inputs. And this isn't even turned up all the way. So if I turn it up, I've got the level control here somewhere. So there's plenty of gain for a stereo line in, which is, that's the one thing that I was a little concerned about because obviously with something like this, that's sort of what looks like really basic, it's actually got a decent amount of gain. We'll test that again. I'm just gonna plug in a mic into this guy. 
And I've got a little headset dynamic mic here, which I will put on. Uh, this is probably going to feed back. I need to be careful about this, but I can plug this in. Let's just turn this right down. So I'll turn my monitors off so I can turn it right up. One, two, 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 two. So that actually, you know, it's peaking. There's enough gain in there for me to plug this dynamic mic in. So now I've got my NTS-1 my Roland, my 707, and my vocal mic all coming in. And this is actually, I can't hear what I'm doing, so I'll just turn the monitors down. So in terms of what we can get into this system, it's actually pretty impressive. Um, I would say, for the price, I think it's about 129 quid, which feels, on the face of it, a little expensive. But when you consider the number of inputs that you've got, it's very impressive. Right, so the next thing I'm going to try is hook it up to my smartphone. It does come with... Uh, a little uh, uh, smartphone type cable, so that's that's uh, mic plus stereo. We've got a lightning to micro, and then in this case I've got uh, a USB-C. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let's turn this down because I'm going to have to unplug it. We'll go into the input. Don't think it draws all that much current, to be honest. So if I now plug in my phone, and I'm just going to, uh, if I get, I've got a, 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 a network camera assist. Uh, uh, here we go. So this, I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring this into the vMix system so you can see what it, what's going on. Right. So now what's happened is this is the uh, camera app from my uh, Android phone, I've plugged it into a US, little USB C adapter, so I've fed power into it and I've also plugged the Go Mixer in. So, what you're hearing now is all coming via the Go Mixer. To start with, I've got uh, my lav mic going in here and I've actually switched on the phantom power and it does work, um, which I didn't expect it to because the manual says it doesn't work. But in fact, you can power USB, at least in this instance, it seems to be over USB power because I have no batteries in here. So that's that's good to know. But back to my main camera. <clears throat> so this camera is now transmitting over the network into our video system over uh, something called NDI. But this could just as easily be like a Facebook live stream or a YouTube stream or some kind of or just my camera app, which I might be want to be recording a performance. Quality is a little bit iffy on this. It's not the best camera in the world, but it should give you the information you need to sort of give you the idea of what's going on. So now, I've had to adjust my levels a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm monitoring from my headphone output. Unfortunately, the headphone output also is um, the same thing that works with the headset. It would be nice to see a separate headphone output that had its own gain, because this is the setup that's right for the level into my camera system, but I'm not hearing enough volume back. So I, what I'd like to have seen is some kind of maybe an additional knob or a little micro pot or something with a separate audio output for gain because one of the other things that we find certainly in a, a show situation is we end up uh, uh, in, a, in a situation whereby the background loud is so loud that we need we need extra gain in headphone amps to be able to hear what's going on over just the background noise uh, so what we use are these little um, you can buy them on ebay or amazon or whatever they're tiny little headphone amps that you just charge up and they just give you all that extra gain so i would probably want to put one in here but i would still like to have seen a separate dedicated headphone output that would have been very useful so anyway that's my gain structure kind of pretty much set up so now if i play playing the, oops, let's go to this shot, sorry. I'm playing the uh, MC707. I'm playing the NTS1. And again, I've got quite a lot of gain. I don't need that much gain. So anyway, that's up. But I've also got a bass guitar here, which we can check. So the bass guitar, this is my trusty old uh, Fender Music Master, short scale bass, because I've got such tiny hands. Had this for years, so I'll plug this in, I'll try not to scratch my lav mic. Um, so now, uh, the gain on here, this is a passive bass, so... Maybe... 
maybe a little bit more. It's hard to balance because I don't really have all that much. So. And that's not a bad sound. I can tell there's plenty of bottom end in there. Anyway, that's enough of that. So that's a decent amount of gain, again, from a passive instrument into here. And don't forget, if you've got an active instrument, we've also got, uh, there is actually a little pad switch on the front for the, uh, for, the mic, for, the, for the guitar input. So if you've got an active instrument, you can pad it down. So it seems they've thought of quite a lot here. Um, we can also use this as a class compliant in the DAW and return stuff from USB. Uh, I'll get onto that now. Uh, once again, apologies for the background noise, but uh, I've got to have the air conditioning on. Uh, you'll have noticed earlier in the video, uh, RX was doing its wonders on the main vocal track, but this is just this mic direct into here. Obviously, I've got no EQ or compression on that. That's just coming straight in. OK, new shirt, new day. Normally, when it's not so hot, I would wear the same shirt for continuity, but I'm not even going to pretend to. This is my very loud summary shirt. So what I've got here is I've got the GoMix Pro plugged into Reaper. I've just selected it. Uh, this is via USB into the Mac. This is just, and it, it comes up as a really no problem whatsoever. So let's take that. So now I can play my audio back. So that is actually coming out and back. We're monitoring out of here into the, uh, the blue box, which is how you're hearing it. So now I can play all of this stuff. And if we look on the screen, let me stop, the, uh, stop that. I've also got a mic, actually. That's probably a little bit easier. So if I bring my mic up, let's just go one, two, one, two, one, two. I try not to get so much feedback. This is a, a decent dynamic mic. I've only got half the amount again and if we look at the screen we can see that uh, I'm recording that signal I can be playing along and, and all that mixing of all of these is coming into here and then back out all well and good that's as it should be but there's also the ability to switch on loop back so if I come to uh, here I've got a little switch here which turns loop back on. So now, if we look at the screen, if I turn my mic down, you can still hear my... What's happening is, is the audio is coming back and into the input, so it's kind of effectively passing through, mixing the computer audio with the mix into a stereo master. So that could be useful for a certain amount of situations. The only problem is, there's, again, there's no specific level for this this all has to be set inside the DAW so I'd like to have seen some kind of pot for even if it was just on the side just for the USB level playback and again the headphones because when I switch playback on I switch loop back on everything gets a bit louder because I'm monitoring twice but switch it off this again is not quite loud enough for me I would like to hear more volume so it brings us back to the situation where I was saying earlier that um, I just need a bit more gain, a bit more, just a little bit more monitoring smarts and this would make it really useful for a lot, a lot of things. However, for the price, the amount of gain you get and the utility, it's not bad at all. I mean, I guess you could buy like one of the little Behringer mini powered USB and have a USB interface built in maybe with a bit of extra routing, but this is so portable Remember, I could pick this up, put my smartphone on it and use it, you know, like this and point it around and, you know, kind of say, here's what I'm looking at and have all those feeds coming in, certainly for a, maybe a trade show or interviews or that kind of thing. It's actually quite impressive. Cost is, it's about 133 UK pounds, so it's not the cheapest of things, but it does do an awful lot. Another thing you should notice, um, when I was powering it from the USB on the Mac, if I switch the... 48 volt on, not enough juice. But when I was powering it from this guy, which is uh, off the PDC port, or the, you know, this 
this is like a 2000 milliamp. This was providing enough power to run the, the 48 volts. So I guess the manual was right in a way. If you plug it into a regular USB port, you're not going to have enough juice to run the 48. But something like an external battery with a decent PD uh, USB-C connection, yes, you can. Anyway, uh, there's a couple of things I didn't get a chance to look at, and that is primarily uh, on this side here, we've got uh, a smartphone in out, which allows us to run this cable here, which is a three prong. So we'd have a stereo return from the smartphone, in analog this would be, and a mono send uh, back in. I couldn't run that. I did actually order some parts and some cables to be able to try and do it, but I just, they didn't arrive in time, so I'm sorry, I couldn't manage that. The other thing I didn't get a chance to try was the idea of the headset and the mic into this because again I ordered some cables they sent the wrong ones so those are the two things that I don't have full experience of I did try and clutch it with the adapters I have I just didn't quite have the right amount but that does bring up an interesting point in that you know we've got one live mic in here another mic in here so that could be the talent this could be the camera operator with a headset that you could then listen to um, into the mix one thing I did try it with was Running this, we have a video conferencing software. So, so say something like Zoom. So if you were doing Zoom and you were using your front-facing camera uh, to point at a subject, maybe you were remotely kind of showing some people on a Zoom panel or something, you could hold this with your smartphone and essentially be talking and also the Zoom audio would return to your headphones via the headphones and you'd be able to actually kind of be directed. So point the camera at this thing, ask them such and such. So in these days where there's remote video production going on, I mean, there are very uh, much higher resolution, more expensive ways to do it, but this would give you that kind of thing. And that's something that I think we might be interested in uh, using ourselves. For certainly for shows or if there's somebody, you know, we could just send them one of these if they got a smartphone and the right cables, we could be, sort of talking through them to a subject. So, you know, there's lots of ways that we could use this. It's a kind of enabling device. And once you start going, hmm, I wonder if I could use it like this. Yes, you know, there are entirely possible scenarios where you think, yeah, this actually could be really useful for what I want in terms of portability and uh, not having to take mains power and what have you with you. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll I guess I can play you out with uh, some more of my noodling, which was from the Pool Stretch Friday Front episode, and a bit of extra stuff on uh, on the uh, NTS One. See you next time. Thanks very much.